Let's get some analysis. Gunnar Aybet joins us now. She's the head of the Department of Political Science and International Relations at Bahçeşehir University here in Istanbul. Uh, Gunnar, thank you very much for joining us. We just heard uh, Nick sort of speak. He said that the Russians did not pose any real threat to Turkey. But according to Turkish authorities, this is the, uh, the fifth time mm -hmm. that there's been an incursion in the airspace and that this jet was warned 10 times in five minutes. Is it justified? Yeah, I think, I mean, five minutes isn't a very long time, but uh, when you think about the speed at which these things fly, you can't really hover up in the air and wait for them to respond. I mean, it could have been coming further into the border. It could have posed a threat. Uh, they didn't even, I, as I believe, they didn't even know it was a Russian jet at the time, I think. Initially, yeah. Initially. So it could have been anything. So I think five minutes is a pretty long time when you're up there in the air in a fighter jet. So in that sense, yes. And also the Russians knew about these rules of engagement that have been in place since... Uh, October 2012 uh, and they've been sort of upgraded since then and when the, there was the downing of the uh, Turkish jet by Syrian forces uh, the, it basically said that Turkey can actually respond militarily uh, without any political consultation under the rules of engagement to any plane that comes within eight kilometers of its border so the Russian president mm -hmm. said that it was a stab in the back by terrorist mm -hmm. accomplices mm -hmm. strong words very strong words, but I would have been surprised if he didn't really. I mean, when you look at the actually, you have to look at the bigger picture and how they responded initially. Initially, the Russian authorities were saying um, this was not done by Turkey. It must have been from the ground by rebels. And then once Turkey admitted that they were the ones who shot the jet down, and then they waited for quite a long time uh, until Putin made this statement. And I think it's really uh, for the benefit of his domestic audience and also for his regional allies, uh, Assad and Iran. And uh, if he had made any, uh, anything less, I think, of a statement, uh, it, it wouldn't have been right. So we expected him to say something like this. But in words are one thing and deeds are another. And I think, you know, Russia will not um, go into a knee-jerk military reaction because of this. I mean, the way they responded this morning, we see that they actually weigh what they're going to do very carefully throughout. And, uh, of course, diplomatically, it's going to be very tough. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we will have strained relations. But I, I think, you know, there is um, an awareness on the part of the Russians, the Turks and NATO as to how dangerous this can be if it escalates. So since everyone is aware of that, I'm sure that, you know, they will find a way for de-escalation, but also a better understanding about rules of engagement when in what is actually a very small theater of war and there are too many actors in it. That's the diplomatic side. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the military side. Mm -hmm. Why was the Russian military jet flying particularly in that area? Because we know that it's actually there's no really strong Daesh mm -hmm. presence there. Well, that's, they've been doing that from the very beginning. They said they went in there to fight Daesh, but actually they've been targeting rebel areas, uh, rebel strongholds uh, in that part of the country, which is uh, near Idlib, uh, where the rebels are strong. And of course, it actually is that strip of land where the Turkmen's are, and they actually straddle a piece of land that's uh, partially held by the Assad regime and partially held by the rebels. So it is actually a very strategic point for the Assad regime to somehow take that area. And as we know, the Russians are actually there to support the Assad regime. And if ground forces that are either Assad or Hezbollah can be put there, they can actually advance across the rebel areas in Idlib and even go as far as the area where Turkey would like uh, a, a, a sort of safe zone. So uh, I think there's a longer term strategic implication as to what Russia is trying to do here. Uh, and uh, it really doesn't have a lot to do with fighting ISIS. But I think we knew that from the beginning. Okay, all right. Gudrun Aybet from Bashishi University, we thank you for that analysis. Thank you.